Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Guillermo Rafales. Yes, I go ahead. My name is Guillermo Rafales, and it's a great honor for me to be with you today at the Virtual Machine Learning School Seville 2020. Let me introduce a little bit uh, Saner and also one of our specialities, Underground Works. Saner is a private and independent engineering group founded in 1956 in Bilbao. Today we employ more than 2,000 professionals and we are working in different projects around the world. We offer to our clients and to society state-of-the-art technological solutions in the fields of aerospace, infrastructure and transport, power, oil and gas and marine. Regarding infrastructure and transport, Sener has an extensive experience in railroads urban transport system, airports, roads, ports, hydraulic engineering, as well as architecture and urban projects. We can provide the range of services required for carrying out a complete project in all these areas. Let's talk now about Sener's underground works. Don't worry, nothing is illegal. During the last 21 years, Sener has had its own technology for tunneling construction, which optimizes operation by means of risk reduction. As you can see in this slide, we started with construction management services for tunnels in 1999 in Portugal with Metro Lee of Lisbon. From there until now, we've been working in other different countries, for example, in France, with the high speed railway crossing the Pyrenees, or in Netherlands with Rotterdam Regassifier. In 2014, we started working in Mexico with Metro of Guadalajara. We also worked in Saudi and Egypt, and we are now in Brazil doing Fortaleza's Metro. More than 224 kilometers of tunnel. 80 kilometers of them had been analyzed and supervised with our technology. Let's cross, please, uh, Guillem. Let's cross during 10 seconds, Barcelona sitting during 2009, following the track of the high speed railway. Barcelona was the scenario of one of the most challenging projects related to risk control management. When it, we can, if we stop here, as you can see, the tunnel passes very close to UNESCO World Heritage Monument, Sagrada Familia, That's right. with a TDM 11.56 meters diameter, boring the soil at 20 meters deep, depth. Sener team monitored 24-7 the complete drive and special care was taken related with possible settlements and affections to the ground. Our predictive risk methodology and our technology work at the highest level of demand. And by means of well-defined protocols, the goal of zero damage and affection was achieved. Let's go back almost to the present, please, Guillem. To the present? Next one. Yes, next, next one. Okay. Let's go to the present. Last year, during Scenario Innovation Forum, we were very lucky to join Francisco Martin, co-founder and CEO of BigML, as our guest. His presentation planted the seeds to start the proof of concept that we will be presenting you in a moment. In Scenario, we are convinced that incorporating machine learning into our processes, our methodology, and our technological solutions for predicting risk during the operation of tunnel boring machines, together with the vast experience of our team and its capabilities, may enable our continued success. I will give special thanks to Guillem Vidal of BigML, Silvia Rate, Ignacio Castellví of Sener for helping us to start this new tomorrow. Now, Let's let me welcome Guillem Vidal, engineer 
and machine learning engineer at BigML, who will give you the details of the guy's study. Guillem, Toteu. Hi, uh, so I'm Guillem Vidal. I was working from the BigML part in, the, in that POC, and I'll explain the, the, big, uh, the machine learning bits. Uh, first, a little description about tunnel boring machines. Um, as you see in the pictures, uh, tunnel boring machines are those machines used to perform rock tunneling excavation. And uh, this little video uh, will, will, will illustrate a little bit. So there's a big wheel turning, excavating the terrain uh, in the front. And, um, and when the terrain is removed, it, it passes inside the machine and into a chamber, and, and then it, it's removed by, by the back of the, of the machine. Uh, in general, we, we chose to analyze uh, gear oil temperature in, in the TBM. Um, there is a, the, the, the main bearing of a TBM is the mechanical core of the machine, and that enables to turn the cutter head that transmits the torque of motorization in the terrain. Uh, this torque is like an engine, and uh, um, this uh, bit is like an engine, and uh, it contains, it needs to be lubricated, and contains, uh, for a 12 meter diameter machine, it contains 5,000 liters of oil. Um, so analyzing the, the temperature of the oil is, is, a, is a good way to monitor the, the condition of the, of the main bearing. Also, there's a lot of external impact in, in, in tunnel boring, and especially the terrain conditions uh, has a lot of impact, but also other impacts such as um, risks with, uh, with the urban uh, locations or, or even uh, political or economical problems. Mainly, uh, we picked as the first POC uh, the, 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 the oil temperature analysis to avoid all the external matters, uh, as, as oil temperature variations depend mostly on, on internal matters. In terms of data, um, we were provided two gigabytes of historic data for one tunnel, um, um, one tunnel project. That uh, the, the, those were 1,700 files and each file was representing a tunnel ring. And uh, in, in each file, each instance represents an instant uh, containing hundreds of attributes recorded in the, in the, in the, inside the machine at that instant. And we had measures provided for every 10 seconds. First thing we did was cleaning the data. Uh, we removed data when the tunnel boring machine was not advancing. And uh, we removed data with low temperatures, or only keep, we only get data with relevant temperatures over 46 degrees Celsius. In terms of main features, the, the machine features, there were hundreds, as I said. Uh, overall features, uh, the torque, for example, representing the, the machine at, uh, turning. Also, some speed features with the machine movement speed and also some rotation speeds. Penetration features would represent the machine penetration in the terrain. Uh, some forces with different matters as well were provided. A lot of pressure features as well to, to represent the, the pressure of the terrain over the machine, but also some internal pressures. And uh, some uh, and different liquids are also involved in the process, such as water, out of water, and also uh, lubricating liquids to, to avoid uh, pressure in the, in, the, in, the, in the turning wheel contact with the terrain and, and other liquids to, to manage the, the, the materials inside the machine. So all the liquids have flows and, and volumes uh, provided as well. We also had chamber, chamber material measures provided, sometimes and frequencies, and many, many other uh, parameters. In terms of feature engineering, what we mainly did was um, um, making a summary for the last uh, time interval to not only have current instant variables, but have a summary for the past moments. As you can imagine, like a, imagining like a car engine, oil, but oil temperature variations um, needs take time. So also in terms of, uh, of future um, parameters about the temperature, we were monitoring the temperature in the in the in an interval of time. We did tests with different intervals, and um, and in the end, what we picked for to, to measure the temperature raises was a 10-minute interval in the future with with a raise of 0 0.3 degrees Celsius. And while the resulting data set after uh, feature engineering and cleaning, it has 120k rows with uh, 8k temperature raises. So uh, a 4% temperature raise is quite unbalanced. First thing was uh, finding data insights. And for that, we used association discovery. It's, a, it's an, a, an unsupervised algorithm in BigML that looks for coincidences in the data and returns rules uh, 
resulting from those coincidences. Here is a, a, a little example of data, so some bank transactions as an example. And rules that could be found here, for example, is the red bits uh, corresponding to the to the green bits. So when customer Bob and account 3421 happens, then mostly zip 46140 happens. And another possible rule would be when the when the category is, is gas, then the amount is under 100. And those rules that are presented by this algorithm have an antecedent and a consequent related to some metrics. Let's look at it. This is how it looks like with with uh, with uh, the, the center data, and uh, what we did is forcing the the, the consequent of the rules. We we forced it to 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 have temperature raises in the next ten minutes. So we said we asked the, the machine, uh, what happens when before there are temperature raises in the next ten minutes, and and the, the results were those rules where we can see the, the antecedent on the left, the consequent, and then the metrics on the on the right. Let's interpret one rule, for example. Uh, here we have a, a rule with antecedent, consequent, and metrics. And um, after uh, having a little bit of expert, uh, center expert uh, uh, summary, we could uh, summarize this rule saying, when, as the antecedent, when the pushing force metric has been high for five minutes and the temperature has been to an average value for five minutes and material is, curr is currently being accumulated inside the machine, then the, the, the consequent, the oil gear temperature will raise over the, the next 10 minutes with the following metrics. So in this case, we can see that there's a 100% confidence. It means that uh, every time uh, the antecedent happens, the, the consequent also happens. And there's a low coverage. So the, the antecedent then, uh, happens uh, a few times. So in general, we, have, we found 32 instances with, the, with that rule into two different rings. And uh, the idea of the, of, the, of the data exploration process was running multiple association discovery and as the data was complex for 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 us, we uh, we needed uh, expert domain experts to to help to help us interpret the data. So we did several iterations, providing the resulting rules to center experts, and, and they um, helped us interpret and and told us based on that we could polish the rules with over the iterations to get uh, to get to interesting rules uh, after after a few iterations. So basically, we would remove some parameters that were not that were not were not interesting. And, and, and in the end, after more iterations, we got to really interesting rules and provided a final set of rules to Center where they picked the ones that they thought more interesting. And analyzing that, we saw that there, there were uh, often a negative material deviation. Uh, so, so we could see that when material was being um, accumulated inside the, the tunnel machine, the, 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 the oil temperature tended to raise. So that's what we could see in the rules. Obviously, those rules are not 100% uh, reliable. We couldn't know exactly. So that the next step was visualizing the data to, to see if, if, if this made sense. We used Grafana as a time-wise visualization, visualization tool. And uh, here, for example, in this, this, uh, this is for uh, one specific bit of the data. So we can see it here on the bottom, on the bottom right that the material uh, deviation is going to negative uh, measures uh, at this moment. So it's being the material is being accumulated over inside the machine over this time, and we can see here that the temperature, oil temperature, is raising at the same moment. We did observe uh, a lot of um, cases like this, and 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 in the end, it, it made sense that material deviation, uh, negative features, uh, was uh, corresponding and 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 could imply uh, tem oil temperature raises. So we went into that direction. And we used anomaly detection to try and and and, and predict that uh, those temperature raises, um, based on uh, as the data set is very unbalanced. So to talk about anomaly detection, we'll discuss it further this afternoon. But uh, a quick uh, a quick description: it's another unsupervised algorithm that uh, that uh, looks for unusual instances in the in the data set. Uh, in general, here as an initial instance, we could have the red one, as it has a, a high amount, a higher amount as the as the rest and uh, than the rest, and um, it, it's the only one with the, with the, with this zip and, and the tech class. So it, it's very different from the others in the group, and it, it could be more anomalous. And the anomaly detectors provide an anomaly score to add to each instance, and the highest is the score. The most anomalous is the instance. That could be a summary about anomaly detection, very quick. And what we did is running anomaly detectors only using material deviation variables. And our goal was checking out if, if those uh, anomalies corresponded to temperature raises. The results were good. So um, we, we saw that the, the, the anomaly, the high anomaly scores often corresponded to temperature raises. 
and um, we filtered uh, um, by getting scores over 50 percent and that resulted in a very small set from the original data but but it already included uh, 12 percent almost 13 percent of the of the original temperature races and uh, and and the new data set so the smaller data set was uh, more balanced this time so we uh, we almost had 12 percent of temperature races you can see in the graphic that um, the, the here's the, the anomaly score so it started at 60 percent and uh, the, the orange the orange data points are the ones with temperature races so we can see how uh, it's it looks more balanced than, than, than it was at the originally then with our balanced data set what we could do is go for supervised learning and and do some classification so the idea would be predicting whether or not the the, the gear temperature will will raise in the next 10 minutes based on the balanced data set we had now for that uh, we split the data to to evaluate it was important to evaluate uh, we split the data with a 70 30 propor proportion and um, linearly so we kept the most recent data uh, to test no test data set has uh, even more uh, temperature raises than the training data set. And we did some feature engineering and, and selection to, to, um, to get the best results. And uh, in the end, the features, the resulting features included material deviation features, oil temperature features, and a few generic parameters from the machine. We started the classification with, a, with, a, with decision trees as they are more interpretable. At the beginning, it's better to see what's happening, to see if you're doing right. Uh, the first evaluation with decision trees was not great, but it was much better than the tests we did before. We could see already um, the rock curve uh, is, is is already having a, approaching a little bit the corner, and 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 and, and the rock you see was at seventy percent. It was better than before, and and it showed us that predictions were possible, even if uh, precision and recall were not even fifty percent. Uh, but we thought uh, we, we'd give it a go, and and we tried uh, with with optimal to find the best models. In optimal, so as most of you know, optimal is a is a is a functionality that finds the best algorithm and parameters to 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 meet uh, the best score for for your data set. And in this case, um, we op we we asked to optimize the rock area under the curve, and uh, we ended up with uh, measures around eighty percent. With with uh, and the best results were given by uh, samples. Uh, and 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 this is the evaluation after the optimal. So we can see that the rock. Uh, the, the area under the curve is 80%. The curve looks much better. Uh, precision and recall values are much higher, so we get to a 50 and 70% already. And this looked much, much more better satisfactory already. So well, I'll explain the results later. In terms of summary, I think I'm, I'm a bit out of time. Um, this is the, 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 um, the workflow that we, as a summary, that we did. So first, we got the data, we cleaned the data, at some features of feature engineering, and then um, finding data insights with a bunch of association discovery uh, executions. Once we found the material deviation had sense, we went for an anomaly detector with material deviation to get only uh, material deviation anomalies and filtered uh, the, the highest anomalies. And then based on that, with a more balanced data set, we could go for a, for a classification, uh, splitting the data set and using optimal to, to find the best ensemble and evaluation. And the results are as follows. So the, the anomaly detector uh, helped us isolate uh, 12, uh, almost 13% of the temperature races in, within a much smaller data set. And based on that, we got results from uh, recall and, and precision results from the, from the classification evaluation. And uh, the, 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 the numbers we got is that we, we could predict 8.8% of temperature races. And uh, our predictions would have a 50% reliability. So precision was 50%. And um, half of the predictions that would half of the temperature race predictions uh, it would, would make would be false. However, 10% uh, of the temperature races would would be would be predicted by by this solution. In, as a as a conclusion, we could say that um, even well, this could be gone further for for uh, for uh, real time alerts in internal boring machines. So the POC was successful. We proved that. Uh, we, with machine learning, it was possible to find good insights from from thermal boring machine data, and 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 there are many more possibilities with with machine learning. And while well, we could imagine, for example, a, an advanced cockpit um, based on machine learning to 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 monitor thermal boring machines and and in real time.